Bonjour Christophe, comment ça va? Hello Christophe, <laughs> nice to meet you here. Wie geht's? Yeah, long, uh, long way from Europe to Singapore, but uh, happy to be here. It is indeed, yeah, it's been, it's been like two very full days. So we number, day number two at Money 2020 Asia. So Onpex has been like proudly exhibiting. So how did it go so far? Um, the, it's a very interesting uh, exhibition here. So uh, let's say the people walking, strolling around are not that many as on, for example, Money 2020 US or Money 2020 Europe. Uh, but the value of the contacts are by far higher. So uh, just because of the massive size of the players here. So, so far it has been an interesting conference. We had been interesting conversations. Let's see what the outcome will be. Okay, so yeah, traffic a bit lesser, but again, the quality of the conversation is yep. better. So hopefully it's going to play out very well for you. Yeah. Um, is it your first uh, Money 2020 Asia? So you went to the first edition last year or no? That was the first uh, no, we have not been exhibiting on Money 2020 Asia yet. Okay. We have only been in Europe and the US and that's why we said this year uh, let's have a little boost here and uh, see how it works. Of course, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Hopefully it's going to work out for you and next year we'll see you there again. If we step back a bit, so on PEX, could you please tell us more about the organization and why it's so unique and why it's worth partnering with you? Um, OnPEX is a payment institution regulated in Luxembourg by the CSSF. Um, we are regulated for the issuing of payment instruments, payment tokens, for the execution of all means of payments and for money remittance. The remittance part is we currently don't use. The, um, the most important part is our uh, account issuing facility. So um, as I think the only one or one of the very rare ones in Europe as a, a financial institution, we have our own bank sort code. Based on this bank sort code, we can issue IBANs accounts that are multi-currency. We built our own correspondent banking network, are connected to the relevant clearing systems uh, to provide multi-currency transaction banking. So the pro that all together, that makes us very unique because on the back end, it's very, very complex and complicated, and we make it very simple to use through an API. The product we are offering, it's simply an account, multi-currency, transaction banking, Swift and SEPA. And the main audience are financial institutions, so payment institutions, e-money issuers, sometimes even banks, stored value providers, and all these kinds of uh, companies. So we're talking as a um, white label solution, then and provide that to their own customers or new to bank, basically. Um, I'm not allowed to say that we are a bank because we are a payment institution, <laughs> um, but we act as a bank. We are not uh, holding the deposits. Uh, this happens with our correspondent banking network, but uh, we are issuing the IBANs. We are the owner of the bank sort codes and we're facilitating uh, all these kinds of transfers. So we are holding the ledgers and managing all the ledgers, the treasury, the FX and everything what happens around. You, uh, it's uh, walking back uh, down memory lane for me because 15 years ago I used to work in payments or so international money uh, payments and anti-money laundering. Worked for Sweet for a short while, so I even that's always like uh, has a special significance for me. Um, if we step back a bit, the payment world and fintech and disruption, uh, uh, it's been totally disrupted. Open banking, the focus is usually on more like the customer experience again, providing added value service on top of the payments. And, and your approach is quite interesting and uh, maybe not quite different as well from all those fancy, you know, like startup trying to disrupt and provide totally different experiences. How do you, again, do you see the value there and what's next? I mean, what's the most important part basically of FinTech in 2019? Uh, where should the organization focus their attention? The question is, is it really disrupted? In, your sh in short terms, <laughs> that's in, what it is, yeah. In my words, I would say it isn't. Because in the end, um, there are only the banks who can really move money. Behind the banks are the central banks, and they are the only ones to issue a currency, control the currency. So it means everything above the level of a central bank is a virtualization of the ledgers. And um, what we currently do um, is we add additional layers on top of central banks, bank layer, fintech layer, 
fintechs using fintechs, bringing an maybe more convenient experience to the consumer. But all the layers underneath, they remain or are more or less still the same way as 10 years back, 15 years back. You communicate through Swift, you communicate through host to host with the banks, but this makes it as well so complex. And we have built all this complexity, taking it away and offering this same services like connecting to a correspondent bank through an API. And um, the disruption does not happen in the way what of the service what we do. It's more or less than our customers who are consumer facing, who then delivering a new customer experience, making, for example, in account FX easier, making uh, cross-border payments faster or uh, less uh, costly, things like that. But the back-end rails are pretty similar still as years back. So again, it's a fascinating approach, but uh, if we're talking about Asia, so many 2020, you also did the US, you did Europe. How important is Asia, though, as part of your um, international strategy for growth? Um, actually, I just come from Shanghai and Hong Kong. Uh, sitting there with law firms, with potential partners, with uh, lawyers, um, with uh, regulators discussing what kind of possibilities we have in the area. Um, we would like to expand our network. Currently we're connected to SEPA, um, so all the clearing locally for Europe. We're connected to SWIFT, but this is always an international. Um, we're currently connecting as well to UK, backs and faster payments, but to really grow the network, we would like to be able, for example, to accept payments in Hong Kong, to accept payments in China, or accept payments in the US, and building such a network requires local regulation, or at least a local partner. And this is what I'm working on. We have Chinese customers already, where we facilitate, for example, payments on uh, Amazon, the collection for lots of uh, Chinese uh, sellers, or where we do payouts for Alipay acquirers in Europe. So we are doing business here, and that's what makes it easier to step into and look how can we grow that. So yes, it is important in our strategy, and we're currently trying to figure out the right way to go. So what might expect that possibly this side of Christmas, so this year, you might make some strides in Asia, possibly. Or possibly I'd, not, I mean, but in the near future, you're really assessing the opportunity, basically. Yeah. We are already uh, yeah. Yeah, assessing the opportunity and looking into it, uh, and we will have to see developments and announcements uh, already up, coming up this year from us, uh, but yeah, it's early, too early to announce something now. No, no, it's fine. I was looking for exquisites, but that's <laughs> fine. Uh